Hello and welcome to episode 6 of my 2 Worlds 2 tutorial Let's Play series. This episode is going to be on doing the quest Veterinarian Practice. Um, it will get us skill points, it will enable us to learn alchemy for free. It's all good when it comes to this quest because you can kill weak creatures, namely ostriches. Notice you can see the health bar when you're casting. I like to get them close to me, <laughs> so I don't have to run there at uh, Rhinoceros. Right, these aren't the ostriches I've got to kill, so you won't see the quest being updated. It's a large, beautiful land out here, and I intend to explore it all. But the ostriches are further along this road. I'm going to keep away from that. Right, I'll fight it if I have to, but it'll take a long time to kill it. Uh, you can also kill these vultures and get spell components. Um, not spell components, you can get alchemy components. But they're not seen as targets, so it might take you a little time to line up correctly really like that. You me. If you get too near, they fly off, so you have to kill them from a little distance. And this one, oh my mana, I'm just not used to it being this slow to regenerate. Now let's try coming at it from this side, make a bigger target, there we go. Oh, that was so... Close. Oh, for goodness sake, come on, surely that was. Alright, this will be the last vulture I kill whilst recording. There we go. Um, but yes, you can loot them if I can get up there. Yeah, there we go. And you can see they give vulture feathers. Are vulture feathers worth having? Let's take a look. There's the ostrich feathers, they give shock resistance, Where's oh there they are, increased duration of effects by one minute. So yeah, they could be really cool, so is it worth killing vultures? Yes, definitely. Right, now where we've got to go is down this bank, under this bridge. And there's something else red here, so we've got to be careful. We are so weak. Right, kill the pack of ostriches, so you know we're in the right place. <laughs> oh, there's three of them, great. Let's let them man. I've just got to make sure I don't run into another creature. Is it chasing me? Yeah, it is. No, oh, I missed it. So you can run away from creatures. That's a nice thing. And I'll be doing that a lot. While I'm weak. Oh, we got our first mint root. I think we need to get five of them. You can tell in the mini-map where the enemies are. Always keep your eyes peeled to that. I just love the noise they make as well. Wow, like a bark. Yeah, until we get a heal spell as well, it's, it was invaluable putting that one point into my health regeneration. Though I might eventually do another point because the health does regenerate quite slowly yet, with just one point into it. <laughs> oh yeah, there we go. How cool. Another level. Now you can see one fighting ostriches. Not only are we getting uh, nice components, but we are levelling up and getting tougher all the time. Now, so let's do points into this. All my points. 
keep just piling them in, piling them in because it's doing my damage and my mana regeneration. Okay, so I've got four skill points. Let's see. Um, I'm going to do now my mana regeneration. So all four points into that. There we go. Notice now I need 20 willpower before I can do any more into that, which is why I keep pumping the points into willpower, because all of these are the same. You only can put so many points in before you'll need a higher willpower. So yeah, um, the next thing I want to try and do is decrease the casting time so I can just keep firing uh, spells but of course I'll need the mana in order to do that so I'm hoping by doing willpower and this you'll see you should know it's the difference with my regeneration right I think that is now me ready to go back and hand in the quest um, actually I'd meant to open up the quest log so if we go to Bayan and Better Renarian. Looks like I have enough mint rue. Yeah, there we go. So time to head back. And I'll head back the way I came, because it's safer. It's so easy to get killed at this stage in the game. And we don't want to do that. I wonder if I can take on one of these. Nah, it's I'm still far too weak. I can skip this all. Oh no, it has aggroed me. Well, when he says that, you normally got aggroed. Oh, it hasn't. Okay, right, let's carry on. If I see any weak creatures, though, I will fight them. Ah, oh, let's try this. I think it's... Uh, oh, Cheetah. See how tough it is. Look at my mana regenerate now. <laughs> they don't stand a chance already. We just need to get our damage up, and then we are cooking. And you can see you can get you get a good chunk of experience as well. Now the reason I prefer another reason I prefer to come out and fight out here is because it's in the open and you can run easily away. Whereas fighting the Groms on that island, it's in close quarters and usually you have to run around bends and stuff, so it's a bit more tricky. But once we get tougher, as in more damage then we can do that, we can go back there. I'll know when I'm ready to do them Groms because I'll be able to take down a rhinoceros easily. So let's do some baboons. They give great items for alchemy and they give some nice experience. And the ostriches. Quick to kill and good XP. You just have to be careful with the baboons. If they do swarm you and they're all throwing rocks, your health can go down yeah, yeah. rather quickly. Oh, I must have looted it then by pure accident. Right, let's go hand in this quest. Maybe I'll gain another level. Creatures do re respawn, so we can keep coming out here, but eventually the experience just simply won't be enough. You know, there'd be too much that you need to gain the next level. But up to level 10, I think, hunting out here is just fantastic. Because it's out in the open, it's pretty safe, you can run, and you will be doing lots of running. Especially if you come across the ants, they're mean. Oh, I've got to go through the village. Looks oh, like you're this? lost. Just trying to get to Hatmandor. Mm, that's no easy feat. Especially with the increased patrols guarding the gate. But there's always another way. And what might that be? It's an old one. Used to be for smuggling goods to avoid the heavy import taxes. Nobody much uses it now seeing as we barely have enough to support ourselves, let alone trade. In fact, I'm one of the last people who even knows where it is. Can't imagine you'd like to share that information. 
I'd even be willing to take you there. For a price, of course. How much are we talking about? 300 ores should do it. I usually ask 500, but you seem like a nice enough guy. Okay, this one is genuine, and this is the second way you can get around the gate, but it is not the way I should be choosing, simply because this way takes you through a dangerous path, and some of the creatures um, are tough, and again, it's close, some of it can be round bends close, so I don't choose that. That's yeah, I could do this, I could very well do it, I have done in the past, but I'll choose to go the better way, which is the other way I'm going to show you. 300 ores for information isn't exactly what I had in mind. If you find a better deal, by all means, let me know. I'll be here if you change your mind. But he is genuine, and so you can use... Weapons are bonus. prohibited here. Oops, let's put my weapon away. Notice the sword suddenly getting red on it. If you, open, if you wield your weapon in towns, the guards, eventually if that sword gets covered in, in blood, in the red then you're going to be kill on sight, so make sure you remember to put your weapon away. You do get a little warning though. Right, so, oh look, there's a horse that hasn't been eaten. Mind you, it does look a bit rough, doesn't it? Do you have the ingredients for the horse's treatment? Yeah, I have everything we need. Good, now listen. Because I'm going to teach you how to prepare and brew any mixture of ingredients by yourself. This kind of knowledge doesn't normally come cheap. Try to be brief. All over Antelore you can find many types of ingredients that can be truly useful to someone trained in the art of alchemy. All you need is to gather the remains of plants or animals and place them in your cauldron. Remember to choose carefully what you're going to cook, because different components will produce varied effects. Of course, Usage of many similar ingredients is the wisest way to produce the most powerful potions. Are you still with me? Yeah, continue. Each time when you cook something, the recipe can be saved on a scroll for easy reference later on. At any time, you can choose a formula from your base to brew a similar mixture. And that just about covers the basics of alchemy. You made a pledge to help my people, and for that I thank you. Please, take this alchemy handbook. It's been in my family for years, and I'd like you to have it. It includes many useful directions, so don't hesitate to look through it if you forget how to brew herbs. Any questions? Let me think. Um, oh, let's just go through some of these for those that wish to... Where can I find ingredients? You can find them all over, Antelor. Just look around. Herbs, mushrooms animal remains, and even natural minerals. Everything is somewhere, but some places are richer than others in certain ingredients. Of course, some things you can buy straight from shopkeepers, but finding them yourself is much more satisfying. I agree. How do I choose which ingredients to brew? Wisely. You'll find hundreds of alchemical components with their own special prowess. Truly powerful potions can be cooked from ingredients that cause similar effects. However, don't hesitate to try mixing things you like. The effect may be rather unexpected. How many ingredients can I use? As many as you like. Of course, you have to be skilled enough to brew everything together, so invest your time in developing this ability. The most powerful mixtures can be made only by the wisest alchemists. Remember that. So I'd imagine people who want to play as warriors, melee, or even rangers with the bow, would use rely on alchemy for their healing potions. But being a magician, of course, eventually we're going to get a healing spell. But it's always nice to have a back backup, uh, especially for healing and for mana. Is there any way to save and reference the formulas? Each time you prepare something new, you can write down the formula on a scroll. These scrolls will eventually make up your own personal alchemy library. That way, you don't have to commit each recipe to memory, and can brew new potions according to saved formulas. I think I'm ready to give it a shot. 
Use as many mint roots as you can. The more you combine, the stronger the mixture will be. Okay, so prepare a cure for the horse's illness in your alchemical pot. Um, right, so we've got the skill book for alchemy. Let's learn it. It's a real shame that as far as I'm aware, you cannot make permanent stat potions in Two Worlds 2. It's a real pity that I loved making them in the first one. But as far as I'm aware, you can't do it in number two. Oh well. Right now, where I thought I was given the skill book. Am I going blind? Okay, well, maybe I've learnt it already. Maybe it's given me the skill already. Um, let's actually look in the skills. Crafting. Oh, yeah, it has it. So it's just given me one point into alchemy. So every time you put a point in, provides a 5% increase to potion strength and a 5% increase to duration. The next will be, next level up on that and be another 5%, so it'll take me to 10 strength and 10 duration. So that's really cool. Remember, a maximum of 10 points you can put into that. So that should end up being um, either 50, yeah, about 50% strength boost and time boost, I'm guessing. Anyway, let's do this. Potion. So place the mint root into the cauldron. Where's the mint root? I have no idea what the mint root looks like. Oh, there. That must be it. So that's one, two, and three. See, it accepts three. I'm going to keep two of them because they're called for poison resistance until I can get uh, the cure poison spell. Uh, they'll be invaluable. I'll just go with the default. Uh, in fact, I should call it something a bit more meaningful, like cure poison. I don't think the game wants to let me do that yet. How does it look? Success? Hope so. I followed your directions, but ended up with this slop. If you're looking for my opinion, the consistency of this purgative is excellent. Let's try it out. Thanks to you, the horse is already starting to look better. I just hope you can help my people the same way. I said I would. Then I'm not one to go back on my word. What do you need me to do? You'll need to travel to Hal Hin and talk to Altan. Explain to him that we're willing to pay for any surplus goods that they have. And that without their help, we can't hope to survive much longer. What makes you think they'll be willing to help? Altan is a good man. If I know him well enough, he'll lend us a helping hand in our time of need. There's not much I can tell you. Take your horse. But please, don't abandon us. Talk to Old Town about securing food for the village. Yeah, well, I'm not so sure I'll do that. Um, I'm not really into the horse riding um, because you can't use horses in Two Worlds 2 for inventory. Um, it just doesn't have that. They don't have that utility anymore, uh, which is a shame. So they're only for riding. And I prefer to walk so I can fight whenever I need to but anyway for those of you that want to learn the law behind Lima I recommend you go into her house oh let's pick a lock okay so you I showed in another episode how to do this so I'm gonna do this There we go, nice and simple. But they do get difficult, hence the club I'm carrying. What do we have here? Oh, what do we get? Not much. Small potion of spectral resistance. I uh, may just be selling that. But yeah, we're looking for. Oh, what was this? 
Oh, cure or poisoning. Definitely be needing that at some point. To up and get the spell. Oh, another lock. Yeah, I like picking the primitive locks. Nice and easy. And these don't have any weight to them, so they're cool. Now, the quickest way to do this one would be like that. Oh, I've got a skill point. Cool. Very nice. Oh, mana potion. Yeah, so it's the same as Two Worlds 2. It's absolutely great. You can just go around robbing them. Silly, you know. And they won't, because they're not seeing me. It's all good. They're my friend. Even if I am going to walk out their house with all full pockets full of their stuff. Oh, here we go. So those of you that want to learn the law behind a lemur, under items now, we'll see that book. Lemur's Adventures. If I open that up, you can read about the story behind a lemur and how she become the head of this village. And yes, I've read all of the laws. Very interesting. And I enjoy it. I really do. So that's how you can get hold of that. Oh, nothing in that one. So there we go. We're making a bit of money, basically, by doing this. Now another place, oh this horse is ours now. So really what you want to do with the horse for now, I mean you might want to go and do the horse quest and the horse riding and all of that, which I have no wish to. Let's see, get away from her. Spacebar will get you on the horse. Uh, rice, maybe I should just show a bit of this. Um. <clears throat> So it's the directional keys, W, A, S, D keys, A and D will turn you left and right whilst you're walking for whilst the horse is walking forwards. Right mouse button speeds you up. Uh, space bars it says is to jump, but I just want to leave this horse by the teleport in actual fact, if I can. There you go. Yeah, so by moving a directional key. And the right mouse button is a good way for turning the horse. Actually, let's look at the map and see how far the teleport's away for that. I think it's a good distance. Yeah, look. Starvation, which is that quest. So maybe I'll just leave the horse here, actually. Yeah, not too close near the village because I don't want them to eat it. Not that I think they would, but you never know. They're all talking about how hungry they are. So I'll just leave the horse here, in fact. I'll ignore the horse for now. And just space bar to get off the horse. But what I want to do, so we've done the quest that I wanted to do in this episode, so now we'll finish it with just me doing some fighting, get my levels up. And I prefer to fight here till I get to a certain level and head back to the Groms on that island. The Vein are humanoid. They drop items like the Groms, but the Vein are tough. So I don't want to fight them yet. And they're over there. I don't know if you can see them, but there's a few of them over there and I'd die. So I'm, I don't want to do that. Let's try this rhinoceros to show you how tough they are. Tough suckers. The trick with these is keep moving left and firing. Oops. You will mess up occasionally. That's fine. Because it is difficult to get the targeting always right. But as long as you keep moving to the left it should miss you most of the time. Might get one hit in. You have to be careful. But they are tough, as you can see. But they're also doable. Ow. 
and they're great XP. Look at that. Check me out. Okay, so gained another level. Let's do my stats. Important to always put the points in at this stage. We need them pretty badly. I will do some more into that eventually, but not yet. I'm going to keep working on my power and regeneration. So I've got three points down here. Ah, oh, look at that. I can do this some more now. Oh, well, now I need 25 willpower. That gives me two points to spare. Um, can't afford to buy any spell cards, so there's no point in doing these yet. Um, let's see. Really, I ought to put another point into the health regeneration. Oh, there's so many things I'd look to, like to put points into, especially the metallurgy. Uh, because I'm going to need to keep upgrading my items and I'd like to do the alchemy as well so you know what I'll just store them points for now this is the main one willpower and that regeneration but I can't do that anymore at the moment but now we will slowly start to own the savannah these hogs you remember how difficult it was before I had to keep running now I will just obliterate Stay down. And check and the XP bar as long as that keeps moving nicely I'm a happy bunny look at this laying them to waste now just with a bit of mana regeneration and more damage of course but it's, things are starting to look cool be ready for the groms yeah. at this rate yeah, you see that XP bar, how sweet it is when it moves after the kill. Getting loads of alchemy components. And it's out in the open, so easy to run away if you need to. And my mana's regenerating now nearly as quickly as I'm using it. But don't be fooled, if I come across a really tough creature, I'd be spamming the spells and it would be burnt up quicker than my mana. It's only because these are all relatively weak creatures. <laughs> Look, one hit kills That's now the ostriches. Oh, another skill point. That means I've killed 25 creatures now. So very cool. can't wait to show you all uh, some of the spells that you can get. But you're glad you met me. So yeah, I like roaming, just roaming around the savannah. Um, killing stuff. And once I've got enough levels, then I can head back to Ulsana Island and start doing the Groms. I'll be a bit better prepared for them then. Kill, gain another level. Uh, let's show you the rocks these throw. Let's get this over with. See? Not very nice. Oh yeah, yeah another level. <laughs> cool. Right, let's do my stats. Keep piling them points into willpower. And into elemental farm. Oh, wait a minute. 20. Oh, because I've got two points plus. So I need to put one more point into that before I can do any more elemental focus. Never mind. Let's keep storing my points till I um, decide what to spend them on.
yeah, on the minimap you can see by the red dots where where creatures are that you can attack. Oh, there's the timer. So I'm gonna kill this one and then I'll end this episode. I think we've done a quest and we've gained some levels. We're doing good. You can just see how enjoyable Two Worlds 2 is. It's absolutely fantastic. Okay, I'll end it here in the next episode. I think we're ready to go fight some Groms. Wherever you are in the world, God bless you and keep you safe. Thank you for watching and have a fantastic day. Goodbye.